Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is Blue Maxima, and we're here with the third Steam Game Festival, the thing where Steam puts out a bunch of indie game demos all at the same time and lets people try them. I ended up trying about, like, 75 demos all up as a part of this event, and I have narrowed it down to 12 of my favourites. Now, I'm not going to be able to go through and give you a little bit of an up and up on what all of the demos that I try to like, but... These 12 demos here are all demos that I thoroughly enjoyed to the point where I was willing to put them all on my wish list because that's actually a thing that helps out Steam uh, developers at this point, right? So, without further ado, we're going to start playing through them one by one. And the one that we're going to start with is not... Uh, is, that was weird. I don't know why I left that open. Uh, the one we're going to start with is Bloodroots. And the reason why is because... I think Bloodroots is the best demo demo of this event that I have seen in this event that I have played. And there's a couple of reasons for that. So I was just able to skip all of the intros and the logos and what have you. But now I just press any button. It just does a... what? Must have still been in the main menu. Okay. We get a, a quick cutscene. <laughs> Showing some really nice art and choice of presentation. And then we're immediately off. Total time from starting the demo to actual gameplay? About 60 seconds. Because now we're just right into it. And this is just great! So, if you're wondering what the game is, it's Hotline Miami, but set in the woods. That, that, that's legitimately it. But there are some more unique things going for it. For example, all sorts of different weaponry that you can use. All sorts of different tactics that you can use. Like rolling on a bloody barrel. Where's the last guy? Oh, there he is. These lovely little cutscenes at the very end. And there's a lot of environmental destruction. Like so. Smack. Kill that guy. Screw him. And immediately get my face chopped off by another dude. But the game is fast, frantic, controls really well. And handles like a dream. Especially when you get like a really good weapon and you're just fucking zipping around. It's great. Grab that. Dead. Dead. Throw it away. Up on the cannon. Boom. And smack. And that's it. Normally that would take me a lot longer to do because, you know, Hotline Miami, I meant it when I said that. It's quite difficult. I've played this demo like three times already. But, the first time I played that, it took me about five minutes. Which I reckon is exactly the perfect length for a Steam Game Festival demo. If you're releasing a demo independent of the Steam Game Festival, maybe I would consider letting a longer time be more relevant, but considering that you've got hundreds of demos to play, you might be a little bit strapped for time. So as a result, you may just find yourself thinking, oh, I need to move on to another demo. I can't play the rest of this one. This one, five minutes, you're done. And there's even a speedrun contest. The top five people get a free copy of the game. And I really appreciate little things like that. So yeah, best example of a demo in this entire event by far. Massively appreciate how they go about things there. And that is on my wish list. The second one is a little different. This is Blind Drive. I mainly clicked on this one because of the logo and the name. And not any other sort of inviting thing. Because... The idea is ridiculous. Driving while you're blind? 
But it turns out the gameplay isn't really the main thing you want to be worrying about here. Headphones are on. Hey, this is some fucked up shit, you know that? Donishka, there's no way to talk to Grandma. Grandma? Yes, you called. I called? Not cancelling on me again, are you, Donish? What? No, I mean... Oh, Jesus, Grandma, did you forget your teeth again? <laughs> yes, yes, don't be mad, I'll put them on when I get home. Try to remember for once, will you? What's the matter, Bubele? You sound all worked up. No, I'm fine. I'm just working a gig. A gig? Science research. An experiment. <laughs> I told you to stop doing those fucked experiments. Get a proper job. They pay well, okay? I need the money. Mm, well, don't be late, Donny. I made you feel the fish. Mm. And Paul Wilkins hasn't had his fur brushed in ages. Wilkins is fine. He only likes it when you... Grandma? Hello? Sweet little grandma on her way home. Well, you dialed her? What a good grandson. Dinner with grandma every Tuesday? Oh. Hey, how do you even... Hey, that's not cool, man. Listening in on private conversations? Oh, you sound upset. Are you upset, Donnie? Uh, yeah, man. Cut out the creepy shit, okay? Well, it's no fun if you're upset. Let's turn on the radio. Something to cheer you up. Oh, you gotta be kidding me! What's that? I can't hear you. <laughs> Fucking scientist, man! So the actual gameplay of this game is moving the analog stick to get out of the way of the cars that are coming at you. And you have to listen for them via sound. So he's just made the job a fair bit harder for me. The bastard. Ow. However, the, the main point of this game isn't the gameplay, but the story that's being told of the crazy scientist kidnapping a guy and forcing him to drive a car while blind. And the voice acting is just the perfect amount of corny cheese. Yes, thank you. Getting better by the minute. <laughs> Good one with the radio. Can we like not do that again? Relax. You're doing so well. I'm gonna give you a treat. Have some ice cream. Save it for your lab rats. I don't like ice cream. Shut up. Everyone likes ice cream. The ice cream truck. Catch it. Yeah, wasn't that delicious? Whoa, this is some good shit. I told you so. And you know what? It's really good for your ears. <laughs> Oh, would you look at the time? What was that? Grandma will be home soon. You're going too slow. Hold on. Is that Mr. Cuckoo Clock? Mr. what? Wilkins? Hey! Are you... Are you in my grandma's house? As I was saying, time to hurry up. Whoa! Happy steering! Man, this is insane! Hey! You still there? I will also point out that they do a really good job with the directional audio. Sorry, I'm sorry, all right? I can't control the fucking car. So if you've got a good pair of headphones on, like they suggest, it is relatively easy to know where the cars are coming from. Oh, I missed an ice cream truck. <laughs> Look, I, I'm just going to stop there because 
I want to save this game for when I have the opportunity to play the full thing. But that is a really clever idea, and I'm really looking forward to digging further into it. Uh, excuse me. Love Roots was still open, that's fine. Alright, let's play Boomerang X. This is apparently published by Devolver Digital. Yeah, just allowed access, come on. Should have already done this yesterday. Uh, we don't need to worry about the options. Yeah, we'll just head straight for the grudge pit. Sure, why not? So here's the drill with Boomerang X. You got a boomerang, you can throw it, you can retrieve it. But the really cool shit comes when you can do this. Whoosh! Then you can charge, hold shift to slow down time, and smack. The maneuverability is top notch. Like, it's so simple. But, so, oh, so satisfying. You can move so fast. Not to mention the animations are so quick and snippy to give you that sense of super accurate personal satisfaction. Not to mention there's a fair bit of strategy involved. You see, you only have to kill the ones that have the yellow symbols above their heads. All the rest can be safely ignored. So if you want to try and play it a little bit fancy by only killing the yellow ones, that just gives you yet another one to aim for. And I don't know what the hell is up with this graphical style, but I like it. It's certainly not like anything I've seen in a, in a long time. get rid of this guy because they can be quite annoying. I don't know what other abilities they plan to add to this. But man, if it ain't satisfying enough on its own right now to get a few hours out of me. Also, see that thing on the outer edge of the screen? That's the enemy alert. Really clever way of alerting you without having to worry too much about Taking up the whole screen. And just the maneuverability is just ace. It's such a cool idea and it's executed really well. Someone spent a lot of time tweaking this to get it just right. And it is immensely satisfying to play as a result. Now, it'd only help if I actually had, like, some skill to put towards actually playing it. God damn. Small-ass targets, even for big-ass beastie boys. There we go. I think that's all you need to see, because, again, I'm saving the rest of this for when the actual game comes out. But, man, that is still really satisfying. Alright, Cosmos Quick Stop. That is not my right display, it is my middle display. I don't know why it thinks it's my right display, but that's just what it does. Alright, we can just go hop straight in. I didn't do the tutorial for this, I just figured it out as I went. But that's fine. You only really need to hop into this one mode in order to really know what the game's about. You want to know what the game's about? Have you ever played Cook, Serve, Delicious? Cook, it's basically Cook, Serve, Delicious. But you're managing an alien space, uh, a space station. Uh, station 2 needs their... Uh, station 2 is going to go and get their 
uh, stuff from the vending machine. They can go because they're done. You can see all the goals you need to get done, is what I'm trying to say, over on the left there. And once they're all done, they're allowed to leave. And you can just press like one or two or three to get them out. Which is nice. Okay, oh, the vending machine's empty. Fast, it's emptied out quick. And as you can see, time is slowly ticking away on the things you need to do up in the top right there. I also need to come over here and uh, pump the fuel up by doing a masturbation motion with my hand when it's attached to the mouse. Uh, number three and four need their ships cleaned. I imagine that this will get more complicated as time goes on. Send them out. Humbo! As you can see, the time still keeps ticking down, even when they, uh, even while their orders are being done. So you have to be over there and get it done fast. You need to keep a really good eye on everything. See, they they just up and left because they were sick of waiting for, for my shit. All right, got to navigate using the arrow keys. Uh, crap, do you need oil? I have no idea what that's supposed to- our oh, control room? Whoops. <laughs> Whoops! I just accidentally completely destroyed a ship. Not great. Uh, Alright, they need the- they need their ship cleaned out first. Uh, up. Uh, toilet's messed up. And, uh, the... Vending machine needs restocking. Number four has decided to go away because screw them. You go for the one that might actually get through this. Number three needs their course planned out. Off you go. Number four needs their fuel. I need to go refill the vending machine. I appreciate the little tips that appear down the bottom left there. Very useful. Alright, uh, you need your course planned out. Are you just like a sit- oh no, you're a bunny strapped to the back of a rocket ship. Ain't that something? Uh, number three, you also need your course planned out. Uh, you need your ship washed. You can go. One needs a ship washed. And let's just clean it up in here. Make it as little mess as possible. Excuse me. Combo! Someone needs their route planned out. Uh, you need your route planned out too. Some fuel needs to be redone. Number two needs theirs as well. Then you go to the control room and save ourselves from an asteroid. Right, 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 up, up, right, left, up, up. Saved it. Number one needs their course planned out. Get out of here. Number three needs their course planned out. And they need some stuff in the vending machine. This is actually pretty fun. Combo. There's a lot of varied tasks. It keeps you on your toes with a good pace. And it's surprisingly enjoyable seeing all these weird aliens and all the weird things that they all do. It's also quite chaotic. Number three and four need their courses planned out. You need to earn a certain amount of money as you go. One, two, four. And 
you need your course planned out. Get out of here. Combo! Number four. Man, they really mess up this toilet bad, don't they? Poor bastards. Must have the worst diarrhea imaginable. Thankfully, it's really easy to get around this place. Really easy to understand where it is you need to be and where you're going. Get out of here. I am here. Go. Good save on my part. Job done! I really enjoyed that. There's just a... There's, it's just got, got just the right amount of chaos and silly stuff going on in the way of aliens. Yeah. You can also play this in co-op. I wonder how much there's going to be like of a, a, a campaign mode, a challenge mode or what have you. But right now that's showing promise and you can see clearly that there's going to be at least four stations with like eight sets of people coming and going as it goes on. So I'm looking forward to seeing how that develops. Next, Forgone. Going to need the controller for this one. I wonder if it's going to let me pick up from the game I quit halfway through or if I'm going to have to start the demo from fresh. We'll find out. Continue. Very good. Alright, let's go. So this is a Metroidvania, but it's got some pretty heavy inspiration from, uh, Dead Cells. In style, in substance, hell, even in some of its upgrade systems. But the one thing I really like about it is just how it plays. It's really smooth. So the way it works is, you have your regular old gun, which you can just use to fire in any direction, and then you've got your melee weapon. Which you can hit to the left a lot, left or right with. And this combination of weaponry gives you everything you need to survive whatever the hell is going on in this game's story. But the upside to it all is just that it just goes really well. Like that's that's the spear. Wrong button. Let's swap it back out to the Falchion. Or Falchion or whatever the hell it's supposed to be pronounced. Entirely different set of attacks, and it's got a, a separate secondary ability as well. It's also a fair bit slower, but it hits somewhat harder. So if I hit select, you can see each hit recharges skills, each hit gains bonus ammo. So if you like playing with your gun, go with the spear. If you like playing uh, with your skills, go with the falchion. And there's just no denying the fact that it just looks really nice. The animations are great. The backgrounds are really well done. Tons of parallax. Really nice art. Nice and defined structure we got going on here. There's even like secrets. That, that's the slide. Nah. Wait, can I hit this? No. Okay. There are secrets. I found one before earlier on, but I guess, I guess not here. So as a result, the game just, in its first couple of minutes, it just kind of sells itself to me on just the absolute smoothness and, uh, what would you call it? Just the general reactivity of the combat. The, animation sla the animations of the slashes are heavy and enjoyable. The guns are really nice to use. There's obviously going to be a fair few different weapons. 
Because there's actually a different pistol to be had as well. I'll swap to it once the game's loaded. So if we uh, come over to the right here, we can actually pick different pistols. So I'll just pick the regular old pistol. And uh, might as well get an emblem as well. If we come over to here, just general upgrade system. And you can even do that for your abilities as well. And there's a blacksmith somewhere around here as well. There he is. Looking for an upgrade? I sure am. Cool. So right now it's just the basic stuff, right? But it's just really smooth and really enjoyable to play. And that's a benefit to me personally. Just the second to second gameplay. Being as enjoyable as it is. Oh, here's the new gun, by the way. Slower firing. A faster firing, but it's got more ammo and it does less damage. There's obviously going to be more than this, of course. But it just goes to show that they're going to have a fair bit of variety in their weaponry. And you can just do stuff like that without even thinking about it. It just comes so naturally. Give me that. Oh, I'm poisoned. That's not good. Also, this soundtrack is pretty good. take much damage but who knows maybe they just put it on like the easiest difficulty by default for the demo just to make things a little simpler what's this and oh another foul tune cool so it's got a chance to apply some status effects you would think there'd be something up here that feels like a secret but I guess not I guess we're going down... Ow. Down here. Alright. Simple enough. much else to say about it so far. I'm just letting the game speak for itself. I mean, it's more than capable of doing so. What's this? Just your regular old-fashioned... Uh oh, gun chucks! Oh, that's sick as. That I like. The animations are so good. What on earth? Well, I guess I get to climb up all this again. Maybe it is the right difficulty. Oh well. Either way, I think that's enough of that demo. 
Because that's the main thing I liked about it. It's just so smooth. Retrieve half of my items to go back to where I was. Nice touch. Nice touch. But yeah. Foregone. Just felt smooth as butter to play from moment one. Really enjoyed it as a result. Hot brass. There's one reason I really like this one. This is basically SWAT, the old first person shooter game that was about following procedure as a SWAT officer, with the perspective of door kickers. And that's it. That was more than enough to get me interested. So I should still have the uh, missions I unlocked, surely. Yeah, I'm surprised you didn't ask for that before. Real world experience. You got challenges, you've got equipment that you can unlock, which you can then equip here. I'll take my Spaz 12. Don't have this gadget here, although it kind of looks like a C4 charge. But we'll just head straight on in. It's weird how they show you all these, like, uh, up close and personal pictures when it's all from this top down perspective. And everyone's represented by these circles. But it's got some really neat stuff going on here. Like, for example, I'm just sneaking by holding this. Or I can hold the A button to sprint. But people can hear me do it. And I can have a look under the door. Someone. There's someone there. But we can't see anyone else. So we probably don't want to go in that way. We probably want to go and have a bit of a look around. We can also hold L2 to crouch and sneak. And we can even hop over the car by pressing the A button. Yeah, I know about I know about shouting. I've done the tutorial. It tells me about that in the tutorial. Unlock Let's go in this way. Open her up. Stay down. Civilian police on your knees. Show me your hands. Police on your knees. Stop. Don't move. <laughs> police, put them up. Police. Don't move! Hold still. So you just gotta yell at them until they decide to follow your follow your orders. Of course, there are some people that won't do that. We'll see if we can find one. There are also collectibles to be found in the level. This is one, for example. Or at least it was. It doesn't appear to be anymore. Looking under door. No one there. We can leave it. Looking under door. Spotted someone. Oh, we got someone in there. Put him up. Don't move. Now he's gone stubborn, so we hit him with a taser. Taking suspect into custody. But there is an interesting thing about this as well. Contact. Get down. Stop where you are. Well, he's air. fighting. I get to shoot him. He's dead. I also have to secure his weapon. Securing evidence. Looking under the door. Area clear. Job done. You know what's funny? That time he shot at me. Last time he did it. That makes things interesting. But there are also all sorts of things like surprise the unarmed hostile. I complete the mission in one minute. And those will unlock uh, bonus things for you, which is a nice touch. Let's go play the Hammond Kidnapping. This game can also be played in up to four player co-op. So you can synchronize raids, you can do all sorts of things like that in order to make sure that you all don't die. Nice touch. Strange how I have the ability to jump over the top of a freaking SWAT van. Dead guy there. So one of the bonus objectives that they showed off is this power that we can cut. Whoa, hi. You don't mind? He fucking destroyed me. Ah, oh, that's good fun. Yeah, infraction. That's also what makes things interesting about this. You're not allowed to shoot at unarmed people. You're not allowed to shoot at people who haven't shot back yet. 
You're not allowed to tase people who aren't unruly. You need to follow the rules. And that's why I said this game is a lot similar to the old SWAT games than you might think. Someone. As a result, it just keeps things interesting. You know what? Screw it. Placing charge. Now I just need to remember how to blow this up. Stop! Breaching! There it goes. Freeze! Let me see your hands! Hands in the air! Get down! Let me see your hands! I'm dead. Ah, <laughs> oh, bastard decided to flashbang me. I really shouldn't be surprised. To be fair, there's not really that much else to see in this demo. Outside of, you know, actually doing that mission properly. But still. It's a lot of fun and I'm looking forward to playing it more in depth when it's actually available. Just because of how it decides to just put all that stuff together. The perspective of door kickers with the sensibilities of the old SWAT games. I'm not going to argue with that in the slightest. Gonna have to get some friends along to play that with. Gonna have to get some friends. Hey folks, for multiple reasons I'm going to be splitting this video up into two halves. So if you want to see The Last Stand Aftermath through to Unsold, hopefully that recording will come sometime next week. For now, see you all next time.